Well, now just to kind of review these 12 basic functions, let's look at uh, a few just kind of general knowledge type questions um, from these 12 basic functions. See if we can, can figure out which ones of these 12s fit these descriptions below. Uh, first one, state the, or the directions to say, state the basic functions that fit the descriptions. So question one, the function whose domain excludes zero. So you have to think back on all of our graphs that we had, all of our functions that we had, which ones uh, did the domains exclude zero? Uh, and one of them was the rational function or the reciprocal function. Um, another one would have been the natural log function. And I think that was it. The next one, the function whose domain consists of all non-negative real numbers. Okay, non-negative mean zero and numbers bigger than zero. Okay, so do we have any of the 12 functions whose domain is just all non-negative real numbers, basically excluding the negatives. And there is one. It's a square root function. Remember, it starts at zero and then goes out to the right and includes all positive numbers. Number three, the two functions that have at least one point of discontinuity. Okay, at least one point of discontinuity. Well, one would be the rational or reciprocal function. Um, another would be, of course, the greatest integer function. And that's it. I've got two, so I think it's those two. Question four, the function that is not a continuous function. Um, well, that would be these two right here. This is the same answers belong to this question as well, or this description as well. Okay, uh, question number seven. Uh, yes, I know I skipped five and six. I threw those out. So those of you following the notes exactly can just skip that slide. State the two functions with end behavior. Okay, we haven't talked about end behavior yet. Uh, not so much described this way, anyway. Um, let me sketch a graph. We'll use this graph to kind of describe what this means. Okay. Well, first let's translate it. What this is saying is the limit as x approaches, approaches means gets closer, approaches negative infinity, the f of x, which is like the y value, approaches positive infinity. So on my graph, I'm gonna go ahead and label the ends of the axes as infinity or negative infinity. So this is saying that as the x goes towards negative infinity, that the y value goes towards positive infinity. In other words, it doesn't matter what the graph's doing out here, it can do all sorts of manner of things out here, but as it goes out this direction, it does something like this. Okay? As it goes to the left, think of negative infinity as left, uh, it goes towards positive infinity, which means up. So which functions, it says that there are two of them, which functions, uh, as they go left, they go up? Okay? There are two of them. One of them is the squaring function, 
or quadratic function, that was the parabola. See the end of the parabola would go out and look like this. Uh, the other is the absolute value function, the V-shape graph. So notice the V-shape as it goes to the left, it looks like this. The final thing I want to look at is how can we combine these basic functions um, graphically. Um, we're going to look at uh, what we call piecewise defined functions where we have functions that are defined in multiple pieces. Okay. Uh, now the, the grid uh, shows up as best as I could make it so, so just kind of do your best to, to look closely and see the grid lines to help you out. Um, but let's go ahead and, and get started here then on this one. It says g of x equals, is defined in two pieces. It's defined to be the absolute value graph for x is less than zero, which are uh, these x's. And it's defined to be the squaring graph for x is bigger than zero, which are these x's over here. Okay, so I want the v-shaped graph, okay, but only the v-shaped graph less than zero. That absolute value graph has a slope of 1, so I am purposely drawing my diagonal to go corner to corner through the boxes, slope of negative 1. And it's the squaring graph for values greater than or equal to 0, so I can fill in the open circle for the equal to. Um, squaring graphs plot 1, 1, 2 squares to 4, 3 squares to 9, so it's going to look like that. So we have the, the straight line that is the absolute value connected right into half of a parabola. Interesting looking graph. Next one, f of x is defined in two pieces. So we've got the squaring function again and then we've got this constant function. We didn't really talk about that as one of our 12 basic ones, um, but we all should know how to graph horizontal constant function lines, so not going to be too big of an issue. Uh, so the parabola you know, the nice smooth parabola here, we want to see it for values less than or equal to 2. Okay, so I'd start at 2, 2 squares to 4, there's a point, then 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 9, looks like this. So there's my parabola piece. No arrow on this end because it doesn't go past 2, uh, but it does arrow on this end. Okay. Now I want to graph the line 4 for x is bigger than 2. So the horizontal line 4 looks like that.